So, uh, we were, we were on the way, and, I don't know, maybe, maybe 15 minutes out, um, we all could almost see where we were going, and what it was, but he could see it, because he was just that kind of person that, he just knew what it was before anybody else did. And so, you know, our 15 minutes passed by, we finally pulled up, and when we got out of the car, the place was just so amazing. And what he did when he got out of the car was so mind-boggling. I don't think your average person could handle it. One time, he walked up to this door, and there was a sign on it that said, Do not disturb, and he didn't disturb. I want to talk to you about a man, not just any man, but let's just say this man is simply electrifying. However, it didn't always start out being electrifying. There was a time before all the jabroni beating, pie eating, trailblazing, eyebrow raising, people's champ. Before any of that, he was just your typical man. Played a few things here and there. He had one desire to change everything. Not only was this guy a legend, I mean, he had the best jokes, he was nice. This one time he came up to me, he's like, dude, I got two beds in my bedroom. I was like, what? I never realized how far away from my goal I was until he made me realize I was standing right next to it. Everything that he ever wanted, he went for it. At first, it didn't work out, as all things mostly do. But through time, hard work, dedication, commitment, Blood, sweat, tears, anything you can think of. He proved them all wrong. They all said that he was terrible. He was nobody. No good. Just a chicken. You know, sort of stuff. I was like, two beds? Why do you need two beds? And he looked at me straight in the face and was like, one bed's for sleeping, obviously, and I, was, I agreed. I was like, that makes sense. You gotta sleep in bed. But he said, the other bed. It's for the magic, you know. So then one day, he told people exactly how he felt. And boy, did they respond. In fact, they responded so well that he actually started being cheered instead of booed. Tell me, where's the logic in that? I'll tell you where it's at. Because this man was simply entertaining. To take anything, say anything, do anything, and people listened. Because they knew that this guy had it. What, what is it? I don't know. I just don't know. Oh man, yeah. I remember when we were kids hunting through the nature trails one day and uh, came across a shady character. Yeah, we, he passed us and then he came back and next thing you know, he, uh, he had a gun pulled out of us. He had to give you your lunch money. And, and you know, thank God he had his 1945 vintage samurai sword strapped to his backpack because if it wasn't for that, we would have been dead that day. And he took that dude's wrist right off. But, somewhere deep down, he just dug deep, and he conquered almost everything. Eventually, he reached the pinnacle of his success. You know, as you'd expect most people to do. 
You'd expect him to retire. You know, go away, never to be seen again. Not him. He decided he wanted to stick around. Play the smack down with some more jabronis. Did it no problem. He was one crazy cat. Beating up those jive turkeys. He ruled the streets, man. He had respect. And his kung fu was legendary. You better not interrupt his kung fu. He'll shove his kung fu right in your face. <laughs> so, the story of his life is it's not as pretty as you would expect. He grew up on the streets, around a lot of drugs, but he was a part of the D.A.R.E. program in school, so he was taught how to say no to drugs. Because of that, he grew up a better person than the rest of us. And because of that, there was there was a time in my life where I was really struggling. I was really I was really in a deep, dark area. And uh, I met him, and he started giving me advice about everything. And over the years of getting to know him, just just knowing him has made my life better and I'm no longer in that dark area in my life because he guided me out of it. Not only did he live a smackdown, he also really loved pie, which you can honestly, you can deny it, a man that loves pie, because pie's good. born with my friend Allison in the same room at the same time with different mothers. It was hard. Anyway, a couple years later, our parents decided to raise us as twins because they were next door neighbors. That was also awkward. But when we were about four, we were getting to be close to kindergarten age and my dad decided that we should learn how to swim. So he threw us into the pool and walked away because that's how you learn how to swim, I guess. Anyway, I remember that he came along and not only did he save us by pulling us out of the water, but he put us back into the water in the shallow end and started teaching us to swim. As the years went by between keeping the schools clean during the day and being a role model and keeping the streets clean at night as a vigilante, he would give us swimming lessons. By high school, we were the twin lifeguards, which didn't really work out that well because Allison's black, but we knew. We knew that we were. And now, because of him and his influence in my life and our lives, I save drowning kids every day. However, he is now simply the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. He is. The trailblazing, eyebrow raising, jabroni beating, pie eating, people's champ. But she already knew that. He is many things. He is a hero. He is courageous. Is kind, courteous, caring, forgiving. He is a friend. But no matter what you call him, whether it be friend, foe, whatever you call him, we're 
you're always going to know him simply as Nick Ramos. Yo, this guy was on fire. Not only was this guy a legend, but... Don't look at the camera. I'm not looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Shut looking I right. was looking down. Shut here. up. I'm gonna sit here. Just... I, I Are make... we recording? Yes. We will make you laugh. Yes, you will. Look I'll that try way. not to. Okay. Why am I saying this? Don't just, ask just questions. Do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> you guys are having a crack. <laughs> Come on! I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. You can do this. Yeah, you at, least, at least you gave me a good like amount of editing space before you broke out into laughter. Okay. <laughs> I was like, magic? Are you talking about what I think you are? He's like, yeah, dude. Something to make your mom proud. I'm like, what? Uh, I'm confused. It's like, no, man, you. Jumping. That's what everyone wanted. <laughs> I don't know. I felt like this joke got. I didn't deliver it right. Is that usable? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> the two bad joke. He found the droids he was looking for. Yes! Yes! I don't know why it's funny! Star Wars! He just did the most amazing... I mean... You know... <gasps> <laughs> I was just gonna start. Cold <laughs> I was just gonna do that. But that was, was a wrong. perfect moment. Oh. <laughs> 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 you want me to do it again? I feel like I like. Do the do the cold train. Do the cold train. Dude, I got two beds in my bedroom. I was like, what? <laughs> Damn it, Nick. <laughs> I think if you have to remove yourself from the shot, please do. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but that, that, that was gone. Oh my god, damn it. Alright, alright. The cold train runs on a whole grand, baby! Woo! <laughs> there we go. Also, this camera doesn't feel like a camera. It's an HD camera, dude. Yeah, it's I know, but I'm, I like. Well, I know. It's I need something in my face, yo. It's recording in 720p, 60 wow. frames per second. Oh, okay. The cool thing about this guy, he, he sees everything in HD. You're recording. Yeah. Oink, oink, oink. I'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> oink, I'm back. Oink, oink. Oh, I'll be back in two minutes. Oink, oink. <laughs> is that what you wanted, Nick? <laughs> Bloopers. This is what you want! This is what you want! <laughs> he was amazing. I was like, boom, boom. <laughs> Blake's fucking. Blake's gonna be just the blooper section. He's oh. not even gonna be in the video. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs>